with you. Well, it may be renowned as New Zealand's ski and adventure capital, but Queenstown on the South Island offers an understated sophistication that my next guest says will appeal to just about anyone, including the executive traveler with its stunning natural beauty, a cosmopolitan food and wine scene, and a healthy serving of cultural attractions. It really is something for everyone in Queenstown. I sound like I'm a brochure advertising the town. Well, to tell us all about it from his perspective, Adam Ford is joining us from the Big Bus Tour and Travel Guide. Adam, we meet again. Good to see you there. Hi, Nadine. You know what I love about New Zealand is that it's relatively close by Australian terms. I mean, a three-hour flight, and it really does feel so different there. Yeah, it's got that feeling of familiarity about it while still being incredibly different. And look, before I went to Queenstown for the first time, this was actually my second visit, I thought to myself, you know what, I'm not going to like this destination. I'm not interested in skiing. I'm not interested in adventure sports. I absolutely fell in love with it. It is extraordinary. I mean, not only you have those aspects of Queenstown, but you also have a whole lot of other great attractions and things to do. But it's the natural setting right there on Lake Wakatipu, surrounded by the remarkable mountains, so majestic. Uh, everybody, I promise you, everybody will fall in love with this destination when they travel there. Peak season is summer, so that's when the big yeah. crowds are in town. Uh, you've got winter when it, the town sort of fills with um, skiers and snowboarders, predominantly from Australia. If you want to avoid the crowds, maybe consider spring or autumn. Uh, you'll have a bit more space to move and you can really enjoy the changing of the seasons that this region is just so renowned for. So if I was going to go to Queenstown, New Zealand, Adam, where would I look to stay? Give me a few different price points. All right, well, when it comes to quality accommodation, you're actually spoiled for choice in Queenstown. I mean, there's a huge variety. You've got luxury lodges, you've got apartments, you've got hotels. Have a look at the Oak Shores, located right on Lake Wakatipu. Uh, very contemporary one, two and three bedroom apartment style accommodation. I just loved waking up to those views of the, of the lake. Extraordinary. Uh, some of the room types have gas fireplaces, which is a nice touch. Uh, full kitchens, free Wi-Fi throughout. So that's definitely worth having a look at and great value for money, I've got to say, the Oak Shores. On the other side of town, the Heritage Queenstown is, is a more traditional hotel style of stay. Now, it, it's really an, a, an experience in itself. I mean, you've got the Alpine styling throughout the, the reception, the bar, the restaurant area with open fireplaces. Again, very spacious contemporary rooms at the Heritage. And what I absolutely loved was the, uh, the spa, the sauna and the plunge pool, which is just, you know, a great way to wind down after a day of outdoor adventuring or perhaps <laughs> urban adventuring depending on uh, what your disposition okay. and age are. <laughs> so then for the urban adventure, if that's what we're calling it these days, um, where do you eat, what do you look at, what do you go do? Yeah, look, the food scene, I've got to say, was again one of the big surprises of my visit to Queenstown. And what's extraordinary about this destination is, is the competition. I mean, there are 140 restaurants and bars across town. That's a lot for a, a town of just 20,000 permanent residents and, of course, a lot of tourists on top of that. But complacency is low, standards are high. Very impressive. Uh, if for fine dining, have a look at Rata in the city centre. Now, uh, great wine list, impeccable service, and you'll get to experience Josh Emmett's take. He's a celebrity chef on the slow-cooked New Zealand classic, uh, dishes like Beef Wellington. Nadine, have you ever come across the cheese roll in your travels? I have not. Enlighten me, please. It All sounds right. like it can't be missed. <laughs> A very humble uh, South Island specialty. It's been given a bit of a makeover and it appears on the menu at Rata, which is a bit of fun, uh, but fantastic. For something really special, uh, have a look at the Sherwood Hotel, which is located just a few minutes' drive out of town. Now, this is actually an upcycled motel complex. It's been given a new lease of life and it's got a sensational eatery attached to it. I don't want to give away too much about this because it's a real surprise when you arrive, but there's a, a real emphasis on local produce. A lot of it is actually grown at the hotel in a market garden. They've got a fantastic pairing of ingredients, a lot of inventiveness, great uh, uh, presentation as well. So that's Sherwood. For fantastic seafood, have a look at Fishbone in the city. Um, everything from bluff oysters to Fiordland crayfish. Their signature dish there is a whole roasted flounder. Amazing. Uh, and just finally, for Asian cuisine, um, Chinese, Malaysian, hawker style or street style of, of dining, uh, head down to Madame Wu, which is located just down on, near the Queenstown waterfront. Very, very popular. Um, uh, an absolutely bustling place. It's open for lunch and dinner. Great. Yeah, I love these old classics that are getting a modern twist. I was yeah. at uh, uh, just outside Harrietville 
in Victoria this weekend at a great little pub called the Wandy Pub, and I got a jaffle. It was a, a chili beef a gourmet jaffle, and it was fantastic. But that's a story for another day. But I will give a plug to the Wandy Pub. It was uh, really great food there. I digress. Uh, let's talk about the things to see and do in Queenstown. I mean, we know skiing, but as you mentioned, in a lot of these so-called ski towns, it is actually summer, spring, autumn that are the high season. Yeah, absolutely. And look, summer is the big season in Queenstown. That comes as a bit of a surprise to people. I mean, one of the activities that's going to be of big interest to a lot of Australians is the wine scene. Now, the Otago region, of course, is very well known for uh, Pinot Noirs, also Chardonnays, Rieslings, Sab Blancs. The list goes on. Not my sort of place at all. Um, now, you can do a fantastic wine tour with Appalachian Central Wine Tours. They'll take you out to visit a lot of the top cellar doors, including Chard Farm, a very historic winery, uh, the Gibston Valley, Valley Winery, very famous for its wine cave, and it also has a sensational cheesery right next door. It was hard to get me out of there. Um, so that's definitely worth a look if you're interested in the wine scene. If you want to tap into the Queenstown art scene, this is actually really interesting. There's a company called Black ZQN Tours, which does a private art tour to visit a number of artists working in the region. And look, at the end of the day, who wouldn't find Queenstown inspiring as an artist? You get to visit some top names too, uh, names like Thomas Brown, uh, also Graham Brinsley. You'll either get to visit them at their private studio or at a commercial gallery if they have one. Uh, Graham Brinsley has a gallery in Arrowtown. That's a really pleasant day trip from Queenstown. Sorry, I'm losing my EPC. That's OK. Um, a very pleasant day trip from Queenstown, so you can go and visit his gallery there. While you're there, uh, pay a visit to the Nadine Milne Gallery. Now, she's got a fantastic collection of contemporary New Zealand artworks on display. It's only a small place, but some top names. That's well worth a visit as well. Well, who knew Queenstown had so much to offer? It sounds like you really got out there, Adam, and enjoyed it all. Thank you for sharing it all with us today. My pleasure.